Uh, so we work with um, our backup doctors in the hospital. So we work 24-hour shifts in the hospital. We have OB hospitalists. So they only, that's awesome. They don't do OB, GY appointments. They just take 24-hour shifts in the hospitals. They've all had very lots of experience with OBs. So they are our backup people in the hospital. And we are, even if you don't meet them, we're communicating with them really well. So if I have somebody who's trying to have a V back, I've told that doctor, hey, so-and-so's here. We're doing this. Everything's fine. You know, I'm keeping her updated. We're doing stuff. We're safe. You know, we're communicating really well with the doctor. And then that way they're already, they already know what's going on. So if I go, ooh, now this baby doesn't look like it's okay, or you're not okay, or something, you're bleeding to, I don't know, something's not okay. It's not the first time they've ever heard you're even in the hospital. They know your story. And sometimes, especially if you're something like VBAC, where it's something where you might need a C-section, they're going to come in and introduce themselves to you before things are hard and then step out when you're working hard. So they're involved, even if you don't actually need that. Does that kind of make sense? So the OB hospitalists would be the ones that would do our, like a C-section in the middle of the night if we needed one, or say you've been pushing for a long time, it's just not going to work. Well, and sometimes we'll be given an update and, you know, we get that question of, well, why haven't you started Pitocin? Well, why, I, you know, and it's like, I, I, I discussed it with her, you know, here's where we're at, here's the conversation. So I think sometimes there's like behind the scenes, there's those like questioning <laughs> But I feel like we do a good job of, I mean, they do a good job of supporting us, you know, even like in the patient room, going in saying like, I know you've had these conversations. Here's my recommendation. They need to hear you say, and I refuse. <laughs> or, and, uh, so. Yeah. But I think it's, it's been pretty seamless overall. Yeah. And like our OBs, like, you know, with patients that are trying for vaginal delivery, you know, and for, for some reason that like we just, like we've done all, like literally all the things like they know we, they're like, <laughs> yeah. they walk in and they're like midwife can't get the baby out you know then there must be some reason you know something going on on the inside you know and then chatting through that you know what is that what is this you know abdominal birth look like you know like what can we do can we do you know when we get back to the OR can we do skin to skin and you know what what can we preserve you know in the switching of the delivery um but yeah they I really yeah they they really are really supportive yeah. so that's you know and like yeah what you know want to come in and support us and what we're doing, you know, because we've had other patients like I've done, maybe the heart rate was low and th we needed a vacuum because, you know, we, we need baby to come and they're so close where they do the vacuum for a little bit, they step away and then we deliver or catch babe, you know, so like we kind of, yeah, have a very unique, you know, working relationship with that.